We live in an amazing place. Yes, we do. And we have been fortunate to see so much of this amazing country. We have. Several years ago, a lady made Paul a quilt. I think you actually brought it up the first time about, you know, we go to so many national parks and state parks that we should get a patch from everyone we go to and sew it on the quilt because the quilt had the United States on it. And it's pretty full. This picture's a little dated. There are a lot more patches on it and more to be sewn on. We have been blessed for sure. But we do live in a very amazing place and we have seen so much of it. We certainly have. And I want to do a quick video on the amazing place we live in here because in just a few videos, we're going to call it a series, we are going to go from the firmament, the atmosphere, all the way down to us in the individual cells. It's an amazing creation. Amazing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the evidence is all around us. Well, it has to be. It's God's creation. Everything. It does have to be. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. So we'll start out there. Everything, even in the heavens, God made. Something amazing about the stars. You can take a picture of the night sky or a video or a time lapse of the night sky today. Mark down the date, take it one year later, and it'll be the exact same thing. You have included an example here. It's September 15th, 2024 in Brownsville, Texas. And you have September 15th, 2025, and it shows identical sky. Which is an amazing thing if you think about it. God's creation is totally Totally in order. He made everything in order. There is no chaos as the evolution theory projects that everything came out of chaos. God started with order and everything still is in order. And if you think about the trillions of stars out there, they're all in the same place. Well, I know you came across some slides that, and some articles that I would call ridiculous. Ridiculous? Let's stroll through a few of these. The evolutionists want to keep us in fear about all sorts of things. Aliens are going to get us. Uh, global warming is going to get us. All kinds of things. They want everybody to be in fear. So these, these articles add a little humor to it, but just to me it shows how ridiculous some of this stuff is. Here are a few examples. There is an airplane-sized asteroid that's going to come very close to the Earth. That was January 26, 20. 24. These are recent articles. Most of them are. Here's one. There's an Olympic-sized swimming pool asteroid headed to the Earth. Well, that's uh, kind of crazy. How would they know an Olympic-sized <laughs> pool? Good question. Here's an asteroid four times the size of the Empire State Building barreling towards Earth. And look at the picture that we've got partially cut off here. It's a sci-fi movie. It's a sci-fi story. How about this one? An asteroid the size of 54 Donald Trumps to pass the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Not 53, but 54. How about this one? Asteroid the size of 28 sheep to ram, ha ha, past the earth. Are they kidding us? I think they're I trying think they to are. see what we will put up with. I think so. Asteroid the size of 64 Canadian geese to pass the earth. And did they get a photograph of these geese passing no. by? No. Or are we just going to look at the CGI? No, CGI only. This looks as bad as the Lost in Space TV show I watched when I was a little kid. <laughs> Asteroid the size of 69 American alligators to pass the Earth. On Tuesday. I think I've seen Tuesday before. Tuesdays are big hmm. days for asteroids. It sure was. Asteroid the size of 100 hot dogs to pass the Earth. How do they pick what they're going to measure it by? <laughs> 100 hot dogs? That sounds yeah, like really yummy if it's got chili and onions on it. But I suppose so. Is that like 40 hamburgers? What are they basing this on? Is this no is science? Yeah, this from, is this supposed is, to be... This is from NASA. These are from NASA. And we're supposed to trust what they say? Yeah. And be impressed by what they say? I and think so. You know the old saying, well, I'm no rocket scientist. Well, that might be a good thing. <laughs> they ought to hire one. <laughs> I don't know. Asteroid the size of 100 Barbie dolls to pass the Earth. Ooh, Thursday. Okay. I mean, I have dozens of these types of ridiculous statements about the size of asteroids. I bet you do. So I don't think I'm going to worry about any of them. I wouldn't. Okay. How did the atmosphere get here? Yeah, the atmosphere is an amazing thing. If evolution happened... How did the atmosphere get here? This says here, according to them, atmosphere, the gas and aerosol envelope that extends from the ocean, land, and ice-covered surface of a planet outward into space. <sighs> 
Earth's atmosphere has been able to contain water in each of its three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, which has been essential for the development of life on the planet. Well, of course, water is essential. That's why God started with water in his creation. The evolution of Earth's current atmosphere is not completely understood. It is thought that the current atmosphere resulted from a gradual release of gases both from the planet's interior and from the metabolic activities of life forms. It's all a thought. Of course, it's not understood. How could the atmosphere around us, that birds fly in and we breathe and all that, how could it just accidentally show up? Notice what it's made of. During the early evolution of the atmosphere on Earth, water must have been able to exist as a liquid. It since, must have been. Since the oceans have been present for at least 3 billion years. Sure. Uh, scientific method, please. Given that solar output for 4 billion years ago was only about 60% of what it is today. <laughs> and of course, they know that too. I don't know. I'm it must have you. been. It must have been. It, it has to be. It must have been. It must have been. Because that's the only way their scenario, their theory, their hypothesis could possibly Possibly, well, it can't even work, but you it's in their the, minds, these Barbie doll, hot dog, alligator, whatever they are. But you see ideas. the belief factored into this thing big time. Well, it has to be a belief it has because to be there's just a belief. no proof of what they're saying. No, it's all, all just a scenario to build up and promote and to bolster their view. It's a worldview, and the worldview matters. It does. Once organisms developed the capability for photosynthesis, oxygen was produced in large quantities. They well, just what developed happened in it. the meantime? They just accidentally developed it all the, on their own. The capability for photosynthesis arose in primitive forms of plants between two and three billion years ago. They don't seem too primitive to me. Two and it, three billion, that's just, yeah. that's a ginormous. That's, that's a huge spread, isn't it? Previous to the evolution of photosynthetic organisms, oxygen was produced in limited qualities as a byproduct of the decomposition of water vapor by ultraviolet radiation. Really? So it's all written as if they know this. Right. And if you're a student and you're just wanting to get through the class and you've been given an assignment to read this chapter, you're just going to read this. You're going to do the study questions at the end of the chapter. You're going to regurgitate it on the test. And if it's repeated over and over and over and over and over again, some of it's going to sink in. Some of it's not. But some people really latch onto it. They do. Look at what the atmosphere is composed of. The current molecular composition of Earth's atmosphere is diatomic nitrogen, diatomic oxygen, argon, water, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, krypton, nitrogen oxide, sulfur, and compounds of ozone. Someone was asking you about ozone just last night. They were. That stuff all just managed to come together in the exact quantity that we need for various functions, including breathing. I think the aliens brought it in little tanks yeah, when they yeah. seeded life I mean, on the planet. You see how ridiculous this is? This is obviously put here by an intelligent designer. If they don't want to call him God, so be it. But an intelligent designer obviously put this in here. Well, they will one day. They will, they absolutely. Will one day bend they will. That's what's so and sad. Say he is God. The sun excites these molecules that are in this atmosphere, and they light up the sky. In some cases, it's beautiful. Exceptionally beautiful. We love watching sunsets. Absolutely. And sunrises. I, well, I like sunrises. <laughs> yes, that was a jab. And the northern lights are kind of neat. Yes, they are. The visible light to our eyes is on the frequency spectrum, the wavelength chart. Everything, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, they're on one side of where we can see. Infrared and microwaves and wireless information, AMF and radio information, and all that is on the other side. There's a narrow band a visible light that we can detect. The issue is, what is light anyway? Fact of the matter is, we cannot see light. Light makes objects visible. It's not that we see the light. It's like when I see somebody that I recognize, anybody, even my own wife, my brain has to recognize that that's my wife. That's who that is. It's not just automatic. We interpret things that we see, and the light allows us to be able to see what we're interpreting. What is light? I have a number of these slides that indicate the same thing. Like this one says, incidentally, the question of whether a photon is a particle or a wave has never 
been fully resolved. They don't know what light is, and man can manipulate light and speed it up and stop it and slow it down. So we don't even know what it is. God said he made the light. It boils down to what is your worldview. Your worldview matters, and you can't mix worldviews. It's either one or the other. Absolutely, that's true. Please share this YouTube channel with your friends and coworkers. In upcoming videos, we're going to continue in this vein of talking about this amazing place that we live. And we'll be talking about people and wonderful creatures. Animals. Everyone loves animals. And we should throw some plants in. Okay, we'll throw some plants in. All right, well, thank you.